Hey guys, this is Kevin for Pixelvert.com. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Sony Vegas Pro or Magix Vegas Pro as it's known nowadays, how to get it, how to use it. We're on the Magix website and we can get the software one of two ways. You can get it as a full piece of software which you own outright, or you can get it as a rental. This is the technique for getting it to own it outright. We go to, uh, on the Magix, we can go to video or we can go to sale. Let's go to sale. And when we go to sale, you get the option for pro video and you'll get three options. One is for Vegas Pro, one is for Vegas Post and Vegas Edit. Vegas Pro is probably the one that most people are aware of. The Vegas Post offers more but you pay more. Uh, what we do is we hit buy now, and then there's usually coupon coupons that you can actually get. I will link in the description to this website. This is the official website, it's perfectly legit, but I'll also see if I can get some coupons for you. Uh, as you can save quite a bit of money, they've actually got a special offer at the moment where you're able to save something like uh, $3,000 on, uh, or Magix uh, Asset Pro bundle. The other way of getting the software is to go to this website. Again, I'll link to it. It allows you to rent the software. So you get it for a yearly payment and it costs about 10 a month, 15 a month, 20 a month, depending on which country you're in and your currency. Uh, we're going to be testing this bad boy here, Vegas Post. Uh, some of the features might not be available in Vegas Pro. You just need to upgrade to access those features. Click on free trial. That will take you to a new page. You then uh, download and the download is a fairly small one. Once the software begins to install, you'll get an option to actually choose your language. You click continue or it just chooses continue and you've got about two or three gigabytes of data to uh, to download. Uh, you don't need to install absolutely everything. I think SoundForge has two different versions. You just need one of them. You'll be able to start the trial and it's usually a seven day ver seven trial seven day trial once you register it you will be able to access all of the features uh, although there'll be some limitations for the trial version uh, the first thing we look at here is the vegas hub uh, there is the hub explorer there's the vegas hub itself which gives you a bunch of stuff that you can explore uh, we've got project media which is the stuff that you are using for a particular project you can explore your hard drive in the explorer tab video effects, media generators, and this includes things like text that you can put inside of the display. And we've got transitions, the famous transitions from Vegas. These are the sorts of things that you see sometimes when you're watching TV or film. Now, there is actually, if we go back to the Vegas hub, there is this thing here which is called an example project. It's about a gigabyte once you uh, once you download that, you will get a sample project that allows you to see the software and what it can do. And it just gives you a good introduction into uh, the software. But uh, I think what you probably want to do is to create your own files. So let's go ahead and close everything and let's set up a new project. So we go to file, we choose new and the project can be whatever size you want. I'm going to choose this guy here. Maybe we'll choose 25 frames per second. And um, let's see, that allows us to start our project. Now there are a lot of features. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to explore in this particular video. But once you've opened your project, this is what it looks like. You have the tab explorer if I can call it that on the left hand side you've got the video area here you've got the music area here and you've got the timeline so let's introduce some media and start looking at how we can actually use this bad boy let's drag a file into this area here it says do you want to set your project uh, video settings to match this media Quite often, that's a good idea. And if we just hit play, you can see what that looks like. And one of the things to bear in mind is that the, the project actually has got 
a preview which can be either set to full preview as we can see here or we can reduce the quality of the preview and if you are having trouble with playback you might want to reduce the quality of the preview now if you have a powerful graphics processor you should be okay just as I'm okay here. I've got the graphics processor playing this. I've got it recording the, the video. So it is doing a good job. And if you've got something really powerful, you shouldn't have too many problems because it does use hardware acceleration to make everything nice and smooth. Now, when it comes to adding audio, once again, we can just drag it in like that. Or indeed, you can go to the Explorer and drag it in from the Explorer window. Uh, you can play back the, the, the music by clicking anywhere in this area here. And that allows you to select a portion of the, uh, of the uh, movie. They call these events. This will be one event. This will be another event. And these are called tracks. So the events go onto the tracks. We can reduce the size of an event like that. And you can see there's a nice amount of snapping going on there. Now, if I play this, we can hear. Now, if you want to play back just a portion, you can click and drag here. And then if you hit the play button, what happens is that it will play just the selection that you've made using this little uh, device here. And you can actually loop it by clicking on this button. It will go around and round and round. Now, this particular feature is also useful for other things as well. For instance, if we want to cut, we can use that to cut. Uh, I've just deleted the audio there. Uh, and we can also, let me undo that Control Z, Control Y, uh, the, the Control Z, Control Y uh, features, um, sh keyboard shortcuts are respected in the software. So we can choose File and Render As. If we choose file render as, we can either render the entire uh, segment, but if we see, you can see here, we've got a whole bunch of options that allow us to export. And the render is the name given to exporting in, in video production. We've got Magic's own HEVC, which is great for internet. If I wanted to put this on YouTube, I can use this with the NVENC encoder, which is the NVIDIA encoder. I've got a, an AMD graphics driver here. I can use that with the AM, AMD VCE encoder. Or if I have Intel, I can use the Intel QSV. So you have options for hardware acceleration. And if you wanted to, you can edit the template. You can create your own templates by hitting the, the save button there. And that allows you to export with exactly the settings that you need. The audio settings are over here and you have other options that sometimes are useful when you are making your video export. Now, once you hit OK, uh, you have the option in the render options to render the loop region only. And if you choose that option, it's on by default, it will render just the selected area. Uh, and that's useful if you're doing a test render just to see how effects or transitions are working. Let's cancel out. And once again, if you have very good hardware, it will render very, very quickly. But if you have limited hardware, you can spend a few minutes or even a few hours waiting for the render to complete. Now, if I wanted to select this entire zone here, I can just double click and it selects the entire zone. Now the files that I've imported as clips here, you can see they're all stacked 
next to one another. What I'm going to do is to demonstrate that you can just scroll through the video just by clicking and dragging in this area here. That will draw out one of those uh, loops, but you don't need necessarily to keep the loop. If you don't want to keep the loop, just click here and the loop disappears. Now, uh, the benefit of uh, doing that is that you can actually scroll through the entire recording, the entire video without hearing the sound necessarily. So, now the tracks are arranged horizontally as well as vertically. Vertically, what we see is that the video track here is coupled with an audio track and then there's another video track and that pattern can repeat on and on and on. If I want to see the underlying track, I would just basically click on the mute button and it allows me to see this track down here. So if I were now to play, hit the play button, I am seeing this track down here and I'm no longer seeing the guys up here. Another way of doing that is to click the solo and that will solo out this particular track down here. Let's go ahead and get rid of the solo and you can see here we have what are known as transitions. So every time we have a gap or a lack of a gap between two events. We move smoothly from one event to the next event and that's known as a transition. And the transitions can be controlled very simply by clicking on a layer. Let me just get rid of this guy here. We don't need this guy anymore. Uh, we can click on a layer and just drag it and then we have a different type of transition. So here we slowly fade in and fade out for that particular transition. Control Z, Control Y is respected as the shortcut keys for doing and undoing. Now, as you can see, we've got lots and lots of tracks here. And if I wanted to get smooth transitions between all of them, what I could do is to either use the technique I've just used, or alternatively, I could go ahead and choose one of my uh, video effects or sorry the transitions. So if I wanted to transition between these two tracks uh, Actually, let's choose two tracks that are slightly different These two tracks here I could just choose any transition Let's choose this guy and place it where the tracks join so there we can place the transition and the software will try to edit the transition so it shows something a little bit more spectacular. It may take a bit of time to render properly so you might want to run it a couple of times and then you'll be able to see it a bit more smoothly. You'll notice that on this particular track here, these are just some random tracks that I chose, there are some, oh, this is known as letterboxing and basically it means that the videos are different sizes, they're different aspect ratios. To fix that, what we would do is to click on this box here and in this view, you can see that we can actually move the placement of the video. Uh, we just basically right click and choose match uh, output aspect ratio and that will get rid of those letter boxes. Now it's important to note that the preview options will control the preview playback. However, the settings that we made right at the beginning, the project settings are important for controlling the quality of the project. So the entire project is determined by the settings here and the settings obviously are going to be things like frame rate and the size of the uh, size of the aspect ratio. Uh, you access those by clicking on that button. The preview you control by clicking on this button and I showed earlier how you access the export settings which control the quality of your exports. So the exports, preview and the project are controlled differently in order to control the overall quality of the project. Let me take, uh, let me show you how we would edit the individual clips. We can go and edit the color of the individual clips very simply by hitting Alt and G. This brings up this area here that allows us to make massive adjustments in how the video actually looks. One really nice new feature is the HSL curves. So first of all, make sure that you click on the uh, media that you want to actually edit and make sure that the uh, track is visible by making sure that that yellow, yellow triangle is right above the track. And we should now be able to edit that one by double clicking in the hue saturation. 
luminance curves. So we can make some points here. And then as you move these guys here, they would target a particular color. And you can change that color in this way by just using these points here. We can reset and we can actually just move the entire thing, make it much different in terms of color in this way. And as you move it around, you do get different effects. And we can go to the color curves. We can now just extend this guy here and that gives us the individual curves for the red, the green, and the blue. So we can change the colors in this way. And you can also change the luminance values by using this editor here. Now there are other options that you've got here as well for editing the colors. Let's take a look at these bad boys here. Uh, we've got the color wheels and the, uh, the these options here, there are four tabs that you can use. They operate slightly differently, a little bit beyond the scope of this video. But if I wanted to use the shadows, let's change this bad boy here. And this will affect the shadows inside of the video. So we're now making the shadows a little bit more blue. We're now making the shadows a little bit more warm colored. And uh, you can target each of the zones using the shadows, the highlights, and the midtones. And you can offset the entire thing using this control here. So it's got very sophisticated color grading features. Uh, there are some new effects called GL uh, transitions. These guys here will transition between one track and another. So if we hit play, that's quite a transition there. What we want to do is to take a look at how we can make this transition a little bit more interesting. Now I've already shown the click and drag method, but even when we've got a click and drag, we can add a new transition. And um, let's choose this transition here, the cro cross warp, and see what that looks like. There you are. Now these transitions in the GL transition area are hardware accelerated. So if you've got a powerful graphics card, these will run much faster than if you just have a powerful CPU. That looks beautiful. So I really like some of these guys here. Experiment with these ones. You can change some of them. You can actually change the settings. You can change the parameters here. Uh, sometimes it's a drop down, which allows you to change to a completely different transition, or you can just change the sliders here to change how the transition appears. Now, moving from transitions, we can go to video effects. And the video effects are really about applying set effects that come with the Vegas in order to change the appearance of the video. And this is what I mean that Vegas gives you a dozen different ways of doing the same thing. So we could go to auto loops and we can click and drag a particular effect onto the video, onto the preview. Uh, we can also click and drag it onto the actual uh, media clip in the timeline. We can undo that by control Z or we can go ahead and click and drag and then we get a control that appears up here. If we click on that control, we can get rid of the effects by clicking on the uh, null or remove effects button. Let me just do that again. Apply effect. We can go ahead and remove the effect by clicking on the button there and then clicking on the remove effect uh, button there. And it will remove the effect that has been applied most recently. So let's do that again by clicking and dragging to the media down here. And once again, we'll get the box come up. If we want to get rid of that, we click on the icon down here. And the icon now is no longer visible here. It is visible just on the media. It will not have an effect whatsoever. If you click on another piece of media, you've got to target the media that you want to affect. So click on the effects icon that gets rid of the effect. We're done. And uh, a final way you can actually apply an effect is to apply an effect to the entire track. That adds the effect right across the entire chain. And to get rid of that, you have a little triangle. These two little chevrons here, you open them up. That gives you 
a little menu, click on that menu, that allows you to remove the effects. Now that's one way of applying effects or three ways of applying the effects. There is another way we can uh, apply an effect. And here we go into insert we need to apply an adjustment track. This is something which is fairly new and we can actually apply an effect to the adjustment track and that will apply the effect to the tracks underneath the adjustment track. That's something which is fairly common in other software and uh, we can click on this button here to control which effects are being applied. So it's common in other software and it has now arrived inside of Vegas Pro. we're up here let's take a look at some of the other features that we find here the media generators generally speaking do require their own track so you can insert a video track uh, let's say we can go ahead and add some text uh, up here and we can then go ahead and edit the text using this box here um, it's pretty primitive but it's very effective and I, I am planning a much longer tutorial if you want to know more about that and when that's available, follow the link in the description and that will explain exactly uh, where you can get that, the, the tutorial or uh, series of tutorials on, on, on this software. Let's go and take a look at how you can actually cut and uh, remove parts of the, uh, of the project. So let's say uh, we've got here this nice little animal here doing some interesting stuff. Right, so let's say we wanna get rid of that. Clicking and hitting the delete button. Another way of getting rid of a track is clicking and just basically removing it like this. So if it's on its own like that, if you just click and do that, it pretty much gets rid of it. Uh, another way of getting rid of tracks um, would be to select several tracks. Let's say we want to remove this track and this track here we can click and shift click, or we can click and control click, and then delete, hit the delete button, that gets rid of all of those guys. And we can easily access the cutting mechanism by clicking on an area, hitting S on the keyboard will split a file into two, and then you can treat those as though they were two different uh, events. Uh, you can apply fades in music just in the same way you can do a crossfade in this way. And if you right click, you can change the appearance of the fade. So you can change the fade to one of a number of different types. That's very useful if the fade you've got just doesn't sound quite right. You want to play around a little bit with that. Another thing that we have, which is really, really cool inside of this software, I can't demonstrate it with any of these clips here, but we have got a, a scene detector. You can't demonstrate it with these clips here because there's not a change in scene, but I'll drag in a video, which we might be able to use for this demonstration. Okay, so this video has changes in scene. So if we right click and choose detect scene and split, it will find positions where the scene changes uh, in the way that the video is edited. Now each of each of these uh, little clips here is basically when the uh, scene changes so much that the artificial intelligence is actually able to detect that the scene has changed from one uh, camera angle to a completely different scene or a completely different camera angle. Um, another feature which I think is pretty cool as well, uh, not this time an AI feature, it's something which has been around a very long time, is that we can add audio plugins. What's changed about that is that we can add audio plugins that are not, uh, that we couldn't add in before. There are a certain type of audio plugins known as VS3. And if we go to options, preferences, there's a section here called VST effects. This allows us now to add VS, VST3 effects. And these are effects which you will get from manufacturers or software houses that produce software. You can add these by 
putting in the line here, you can actually say, okay, I want to add the path where these uh, plugins are stored. It'll be different on your computer to my computer. But once you find the path, you just basically add it here. And every time the software starts, it will go through and find any plugins that you, you need to use for your audio. So this software is very powerful in that it allows you to host some very sophisticated plugins that you can use to edit your audio for removing noise uh, or adding reverb or whatever other effects that you've actually purchased um, the, 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 the software for. Uh, one thing I would warn you is you probably want to add VST plugins last. It, you want to find out how well the software works, how stable it is. And then once you figured out how good it works on your PC, only at that point start adding in plugins because you don't want to make the system unstable and think that it's actually the software which is unstable when it's actually a plugin that's unstable. If we go to Hub Explorer, there's a feature called File Drop, and this allows you to request people to upload files to a website, and then you can access that website. Uh, so right click there, choose Manage File Drop, and it will log in to your account with uh, Magix. And then you can send invitations to people. You just need their name and an email. And then you can give them a certain time limit, let's say one month. And you can say, right, this person is allowed to upload uh, a certain amount of gigabytes, send the invitation, and then they can use that link to upload files. And if you're working with someone who delivers video content to you, the, then you can download that file using the file drop mechanism. It's useful. I'm sure there are many other alternative ways of working like that, but this one is built right into Vegas. So let's take a look at the last few features. Uh, let's go and select this track here and hit Alt G, which brings up the uh, color grading. There is a feature called white balance. You'll find it in the utilities. This is something new that allows you to change the white balance of a, of a video. So we can change the balance there, maybe make that a little bit more cool in that way. And we can see the before and after by clicking here. And if we want to restore the original settings, we click here. Uh, another thing you should be aware of is that the when working on the timeline, if we hover at the edge of a, of, of a clip or an event, we can bring in a fade just by doing that. And if we select several clips like that, we can actually bring in a fade for all of them at the same time. It'll be an identical fade. Just like that. Now that's hopefully some very useful features. The, the other thing that may be very useful is to know that these levels here for the video track will control the opacity of the entire video track. Uh, and you can also control the volume of an audio track using this control here. You can pan it uh, to one side, left and right using this control down here. And obviously double clicking will get rid of the uh, pan. Um, you can also, as long as the video and audio is relatively large like that, you can easily control the volume by using this control, which is hidden right at the top of the track or the top of the media event. And you can just reduce the volume like that. And you can reduce also the opacity using that simple control. So that's basically a what I hope is a very good introduction to the software. At this stage, you should know most of what you need to know to do a very good edit. Guys, I'm going to leave it at that. If you have any questions or any comments, feel free to leave them in the description below. Like I say, I'm going to have a much longer video, a much longer tutorial or even a short course. Uh, links in the description if you want to find out a little bit more about that one.